Tim O'Malley with Tim Priester from Ryan Field a couple hours before kickoff between number four Notre Dame and Northwestern and Tim we're at the point now where all summer people are wondering fans and media is this a trap game when you're eight no all four games remaining are trap games yeah I don't know that it falls under that category whatever it's November and Notre Dame's number four in the rankings and they need to win a football game I think their frame of mind is right you know I mean it is a lot of coach speak and player speak during the week but you know, I think that they have the right frame of mind and learn from last year's situation. Uh, you know, a lot of the players now, in retrospect, are saying that they didn't have the right frame of mind going to Miami. That isn't a problem now. They know what Northwestern's capable of. This is a, a, a good team, if not a great team, uh, and there's so much at stake that you just can't look past the next minute. So I think their frame of mind is correct heading into this game. And it's not coach speak if players believe it, right? That's, that's sometimes what it comes down to now. Drew Tranquil, of course, is the question mark for the Irish defense. We did see them just take the field recently. Tranquil, Tranquil walked out there. I mean, if you didn't know, you could tell he probably had an ankle injury just by watching him walk. We don't really expect him to play because it's illogical, uh, but he just has not been ruled out yet. Yeah, we tried to rule him we out did. earlier in the day, I mean, based upon what we're hearing, but he refuses to be ruled out. So he's going to give it a shot. I, I wouldn't think that he's effective. It was a significant injury yeah. just seven days ago, and, and I think it's more likely that you're going to see the real Drew Tranquil uh, next week when when, uh, when Florida State comes to, to Notre Dame Stadium for the final home game. But. Uh, we expect Asmar Bilal to play the, the buck position. They're, they will be in nickel a good portion of the time, although Northwestern's running the football better with Isaiah Bowser at running back. But they will be in nickel most of the time. That means Houston Griffith, who didn't play last week. And when they're in base with Bilal at buck linebacker, it would be Shane Simon. So you obviously need Drew Tranquil to be at your best. So Bilal has trained at this position and played this position before, so it's not a huge transition for him for this game. And I think the key to this for Northwestern really to keep it close, obviously they would have to play great defense against a Notre Dame offense that with Ian Book averages about 40 points a game. I mean, I, I can't see Northwestern coming out here and putting a 30-something spot on Notre Dame's defense. So for them to hang in it and to put game pressure on Notre Dame, they're going to have to have the best version of the Wildcats defense. There's no doubt about that. And, and you know, I think that I think Northwestern does hold Notre Dame down a little bit, at least what Notre Dame has generally become accustomed to with Ian Book and quarterback. But I would agree. I don't think that Northwestern is in a position to score 24, 27 points today. Uh, then it becomes a little bit of a challenge. I see Notre Dame in the 30-point 30 30 point range or low 30s. And, you know, uh, on, on the flip side, I mean, Northwestern's defense, 109th in sacks, 109th in uh, tackles for lost yardage. I don't see Ian Book under a lot of duress today. Now, Notre Dame's offensive line is not a finished product. They hit a new lineup last week. But I still think that Notre Dame's in pretty good shape here offensively. And that Northwestern is still by and large going to be a one-dimensional offense, and that obviously plays in Notre Dame's favor. It's going to be a crisp evening. It's already a little bit crisp. I left my jacket upstairs. Uh, I have been on the field. It seems fine to me, but I'm not running and cutting on it against uh, against Clayton Thorson and the receivers. But that is all for, for pregame. We'll be back postgame with more incident analysis from Ryan Field.